The city of Jacksonville today, far different than what it could have been. A vote by 86,000 people in Duval County 50 years ago created the so-called bold new city of the South. Consolidation took Jacksonville to the 27th largest city in America. Many believe for good, some say for the worse. Since consolidation, um, we've been victims of taxation without representation. On one hand, consolidation might have been good. On another hand, it wasn't because it did not do what it was intended to do. An examination of consolidation through a roundtable discussion on This Week in Jacksonville. Next. Yes, consolidation in Jacksonville. That's the main topic this morning. And so 10 years ago, we dusted off the archives and we showed a program we aired 50 years ago. It's too early to tell what the solution for Jacksonville should be. Whether there should be one single unified governmental unit for the county or some different form. Tonight's program, a superficial look at the problem itself, is an argument for intense self-examination in the weeks and months to come. Jacksonville and Duval County have a greater destiny ahead, but government operated by gaslight will not get us there. So Government by Gaslight is one of the investigative and editorial programs Channel 4 presented that exposed the problems in local government at that time and urged for solutions. We're going to spend uh, some time this morning with a great panel, a full table, and let me introduce uh, some of our guests this morning. Rick Mullaney is a former chief of staff to Mayor John Delaney and general counsel for the city for almost 13 years. Chris Hand, a former chief of staff to Mayor Alvin Brown. Harry Reagan is, uh, I'm going to call him historian, a former city council member, former editorial director here at Channel 4 and sitting right next to Jake Godbold, who's the former mayor of Jacksonville. We appreciate you being with us. And uh, you all know Tom Wills, news anchor here at Channel 4 since 1975 and who was really helpful in deciding who would be great voices in talking about consolidation. You're all of my favorite people. <laughs> so uh, so I just want to start here and, and maybe we go to this side of the table first. We know it was a cure to corruption in local politics politics, but how did consolidation happen? And really, I want to know, uh, why is that still important to us? Uh, well, Kent, first of all, it, it was the result of profound crisis and some great statesmanship. And that crisis was severe. Five of nine city council members were indicted. The property appraiser was indicted for low valuations and property taxes, which led to the lowest spending per capita for students in the state of Florida and the disaccreditation of our schools. Sewage was being dumped into the river racial strife and services not lacking to the county and services throughout the county. As a result, a group of statesmen came forward very bold. Channel 4 was a part of that. The Times Union was a part of that. And based on something that happened in 1934, a specific amendment, it allowed Jacksonville to do something extraordinary. Really, the most significant local government change in the history of our state when we consolidated. We abolished the county government. We abolished the city government, and we put in its place one government, a consolidated government, with a strong mayor form of government, one of those eight consolidated right. forms of government, mayors right here. That changed the direction of the city and, I believe, the trajectory of our city. Yeah, Harry, I want you to weigh in on this. I showed a little clip of that, uh, that investigative piece that we did back in the in the Government by Gaslight, there. yep. I exactly. So, obviously, Channel 4 played a role there, but what do you remember about that time? You arrived here at our station just as that vote had happened and things were changing in Jacksonville. And one of the reasons I wanted to come here and uh, was very happy to get a job offer was they were doing real good journalism and watchdog journalism very good. and uh, it wasn't being done a lot of places it certainly was not being done very much on television yeah. and they the government by gaslight fo uh, focused primarily on the waste and duplication of government which is a big argument all by itself but then in addition to that you had all of the corruption uh, public officials going to prison and so forth yeah. which really focused a lot of additional attention on the need yeah. for reform. Chris, you just wrote a, a column there, an opinion piece that appeared in the Times Union about consolidation. Uh, what are your views on why that was so important to happen 50 years ago? Well, I think it was transformational for all the reasons that some of the other panelists have already referred to, Kent. And, you know, now we're sitting between two very significant anniversaries. August 8th, 1967 was the consolidation vote, so we've just celebrated the 50th anniversary. October 1, 1968 was the implementation of consolidation, so we're coming up on that 50th anniversary. I don't think any of Jacksonville's modern successes would have happened but for consolidation, so it's definitely something we should celebrate. But I think we should also celebrate by 
recognizing that promises were made to a number of neighborhoods in Jacksonville during the consolidation campaign that have not yet been fulfilled. Promises of economic development, of infrastructure, of water and sewer systems, better economic funding, particularly in neighborhoods in Northwest and East Jacksonville, have not yet been fully fulfilled. One of the best ways we can celebrate consolidation is by making sure that its benefits extend to everyone in Jacksonville, especially those to whom they were promised and have not yet been delivered. So, and, and I definitely want to spend a little bit more time on that specific component of the kind of the track record uh, in our next segment. Mayor Godbold, I, I want to hear from you. I understand that back then people who were uh, supporting this consolidation movement were white hats, the other side, black hats. Mm -hmm. Where were you on this? Because you were already serving in, in city government then. Yeah, I was. And uh, I wasn't really involved in, in, uh, in a white hat or black hat because I was young. I uh, worked for Independent Life. Uh, Mr. Bryant, who was president of Independent, uh, was very much for consolidation. And after this happened, now with all you said and all the problems that the county, city, duplications, two library systems, yeah. two police systems, uh, two everything, county commission, city commission, and a mayor, and a city council. I mean, uh, with all of that, that ought to sold it real easy. But when it really got down to it, uh, it, it, it the public, uh, the leaders of consolidation, really had a feeling this thing wasn't going to pass. And with all the great reporters y'all had and all the investigating reporters and all the corruption, it still didn't think that it was going to pass. And really what we did, the people, when, when we went out to sell consolidation, we really oversold it because mm -hmm. we made a lot of promises that we would do this, this, and this, and we really haven't been able to keep those promises. Yeah. It fits right into what you said, Hat. Oh, uh, we... Uh, we, and another thing we did that, in my opinion, it was wrong. A lot of people don't, may not believe it, but uh, the, uh, they, they thought they were so concerned that it wouldn't pass that uh, they told the beaches in Baldwin, uh, you could vote right. yourself in and vote for, I mean, you could vote for consolidation, but you could vote yourself out. Mm -hmm. So they voted their self, they voted for consolidation for city of Jacksonville, but they voted themselves out so they could keep three, four municipalities sitting out here by themselves. And so there's some of that duplication that you there's, talked about. There's still, still some of that duplication. With, with and much to my surprise, they've got along pretty good. Yeah. I didn't think they would last that long. I would think they would have had to consolidate or go somewhere. But we, we one of the main things I want to make a point about it, one of the one of the other main issues that we did in selling consolidation is that we were telling people how how much lower the taxes were going to be, and we've carried that obligation. A lot of people don't want to believe it, but we've had some very conservative mayors through <laughs> consolidation and have kept. When we started off consolidation, we may have had. What, 10 mils? What do we got now, 11? We, we haven't gone up. Miami, Maybe Tampa, no. all of these have gone to the top of the mill. Jacksonville never did. It stayed down. We, one of the reasons we haven't done a lot of the things you're talking about is because we haven't had the guts and the courage to budget our budgets like we ought to and do the capital outlay projects and, and water projects and street projects and infrastructure that we ought to do. So that's not the Harry. fault of consolidation. Right. No, no, no. Consolidation is a great idea, but it doesn't guarantee you've got to elect good people that's who right. make the right decisions. Uh, and I didn't mean guys, to say that. I grew up in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, it's still my hometown. I know it very well. Do you know that there are 35 suburbs, their borders touch the border of the city of Pittsburgh. There are 220 municipal governments in Allegheny County. I could get a, a speeding ticket in Aspenwall and I, by the Aspenwall police. I could drive two blocks and I could get another speeding ticket from the Fox Apple yeah, police. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, it's one of the best. It's the only two governments that did that. And we copied Nashville. And Nashville decided that they were going to have 28 city councilmen. I think we hit, our charter people hit 
a great number. With, Eight, yeah. uh, 19. You are so Five at large. Mayor, I need to take a break, but uh, I want to keep talking about this. Obviously, we're going to do that for the whole show. So that's a little bit of the way and why it happened. But what is the track record of consolidation? We're going to look at some of those things that maybe need to be improved here as we go into year 50 coming up. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Oh boy. Looking for adventure this summer? Holy smokes. Oh, man, that's pretty intense. Look no further than Chevrolet. This is a fast car. I feel like I left my soul back there. Wow, this has power. What a nice car. Go for thrilling drives and deals today at the Chevy Summer Drive. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Malibu for around $199 a month. Or get $3,500 cash allowance on most Chevy Malibu models. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Gloria always went big. So we helped her plan a memorial service that no one would soon forget. This one's for you, Gloria. Only a Dignity Memorial Professional can celebrate a life like no other. Find out how at DignityJacksonville.com. Infinity QX60. Impressive performance and seating for seven. Lease the Infinity QX60 for $369 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. Homes built before 1975 may have pipe corrosion that can cause major water damage to your home. If you have water damage, slow drains, or water stained walls, you may have leaking pipes right below your feet. Call us now at 800-888-1234 to find out if you are entitled to compensation to repipe your home. Your time to file a claim may be limited. Call or visit pipelawsuit.com now to learn more. Nissan is the premier partner of the Heisman Trophy, and we surprised fans with this award-winning lineup. Hey, George. Marcus Allen. Desmond Howard. All right, are you guys ready to go train with us? All right, let's go do it. Then... They experienced Nissan's award-winning lineup. No blind spots. That is a feature I could do. It's Nissan's bottom line model year end event. Save up to $5,300 on the 2017 Altima. Or save up to $10,760 on select models. Will you take me to the Nissan dealership? <laughs> Two officers have been shot. Sky 4 is flying over the scene. As many as seven to possibly eight shots. And all of a sudden we heard some bang bang. The suspect was shot and killed. Keep these officers and their families in your prayers. Thank you for calling us and letting us know. Police officers are just regular people in our community. They are a very special breed of men and women that actually come on and do the job, knowing the dangers, knowing the risks, to make the city as safe as possible. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. And welcome back to our conversation about consolidation in Jacksonville, voted on back in 1967. We're focused this segment on the track record and what's happened since that vote 50 years ago. I spoke this week with Isaiah Rumlin, president of Jacksonville's chapter of the NAACP. He says it's time to revisit the issue because it hasn't completely delivered what was promised. On one hand, consolidation might have been good. On another hand, it wasn't because it did not do what it was intended to do as it relates to certain sections of our community. Um, infrastructure, uh, sewage, septic tanks, all of those items uh, and all those issues were supposed to have been taken care of under consolidation, but they was not. This community was left behind. Um, uh, not only in predominant African-American communities, but uh, in other parts of the city, other communities, certain sections of white communities are still on septic tanks. Um, and I think that's a major infrastructure problem that the city need to uh, revisit and, uh, and get that corrected. Chris, this is an issue that you focused on in the uh, editorial I said you, you mentioned. You mentioned it a moment ago. There's some areas that still could stand to follow up on the promises that we heard about in the consolidation vote. 
Well, President Rumlin's absolutely right. And there was a the city council in 2000, 2000, 2013, 2014 had a task force on consolidated government. And this is one of the issues they explored. And what they found is that even today, nearly 50 years uh, after consolidation was implemented, there are hundreds of miles of unpaved road, roads in Jacksonville, hundreds if not thousands of businesses and homes that are not on water lines, not on sewer systems. And also that report made some recommendations on how to fix that to dedicate a percentage of the city's capital improvement program, its infrastructure budget each year, to fulfilling some of these promises and encouraging JEA and other independent authorities to do the same. So he's absolutely right. And again, I think one of the best ways we can celebrate consolidation is by recommitting to keeping the promises that were made in 1967. Harry, I heard you mentioned something about that a moment ago. It's not necessarily the system. It might be the leaders. What, what do you think uh, over these years, what have you seen that maybe could have advance this differently very hard to prove this but i still think in my heart that jacksonville is better off with consolidation uh, absolutely I mean, if, God, if you can imagine what it would be I, I, I you know and that goes for white and black uh, you know everybody in the city but it hasn't gotten us exactly where we would like to be there's still work to be done yeah. there's no doubt that in my opinion i was there 14 years on the city council I served on the old city council when a lot of the corrupt people went out and we got elected to a nine-man city council. And then I had I served two years of that, as you right. mentioned. And then I had to turn around and run again for the consolidation. And uh and I was one and then I was the first there, and then I was the mayor for eight and a half years, the second mayor. But uh we uh we had a lot of things to make up for. You gotta remember. That uh, there wasn't a lot of stuff going on downtown. There wasn't a lot of stuff in the county. And the city had 72 uh, outfalls, I hear. We didn't have a, we didn't have, the Buckman sewer treatment plant wasn't working properly and nearly closed it down things, a lot of things and everything. Right. Uh, we had a lot of problems to meet. And we've met a lot of problems consolidation has. But, it, but we've got to have, every year in a government, where you got, this is a strong mayor government. This ain't any place for a sissy to be mayor. <laughs> this mayor has a lot of power, but he's got to know how to use it, and he's got to know how, to, and we've had some great mayors uh, during consolidation. But the first 14 years of, the first 12 years of consolidation, we did, and I was part of it. I was council president twice during that time, so I take my responsibility. But during the first 12 years of consolidation, we built three major projects. Mary Singleton, Charlie Webb Library, mm. and Habba Park. Mm. You ought to do four capital, four or five capital outlay projects every year. Oh. So it was a lot trying to, to live up to that. I want to give me, Rick a, say it was a lot trying it. to live up yes. to keeping the taxes yeah. down an exactly. awful lot. Let me say something about public resistance. I happen to live in a part of town that is well in septic tank. You tell those people yeah. that you're going to cut down their trees and you're going to bring in sewer lines and water, they will, they'll go to the ramparts no to fight you not. to keep you out. They, live they in want a, their septic tanks and they want their wells. Tom, I live in a section of town right now that can be hooked up to sewer, and it, but they know, the city says, we won't force you. Mm -hmm. We need to say, you've got to do it. Mm -hmm. It's what we need to do and have the guts Rick, to do it. You, but they would rather stay on that septic tank, yeah, as yeah. you said. Rick, you, you told me before we visited today, you said there were some clear things that took the city forward because Jacksonville uh, consolidated. Absolutely. So I, I want to talk a little bit, big picture and a little bit of difference at the table. Ed Austin once called this the best form of local government in the country. I agree with him. Uh, uh, Hans Tanzler said we are the envy of the state of Florida. There were some things that weren't delivered, but let me tell you this. Consolidated government delivered things we never expected and made things possible that we never expected. In 1968, I don't think we quite began to dream until this mayor began to dream it, that we could bring an NFL team here. I believe we don't bring the NFL here without consolidated government. In 2000, John Delaney passed the Better Jacksonville Plan, $2.2 billion investment in infrastructure. It was failing all around the rest of the state, those kinds of initiatives. I don't believe that passes without consolidated government. The preservation project in which we purchased 10% of the county. That wouldn't, that wouldn't but, pass if let, it hadn't been for leadership. The mayor that was the mayor. Let me say why that's because we have one mayor, not in Miami-Dade, they have 36 mayors. 
We have won the ability of consolidated government to build a consensus, to pursue a policy objective in, is out of all proportion to our size. That's how we brought the NFL here. That's how we beat the, passed the Better Jacksonville Plan, the Preservation Project. Lenny Curry recently passed a pension tax statute unlike any in the rest of the state. Yeah. I believe it's because Jacksonville is uniquely positioned, the only one in the state, that through vision and leadership and this form of government can yeah. do remarkable things. It still takes leadership, still takes vision, but I believe we have the best form of local government in the so state. The front consolidated government is the great government it is because of the charter. Yes. Because you got a strong mayor, but there's no substitute for leadership. None. There's no substitute <laughs> for guts and courage and foresight. And so it, it depends on that man or woman you elect but I will to sit but in I that will, seat but I will to tell you take this. those tools and make them work. Prior to 1968, I don't care how good your mayor was or how good your vision was, the yeah. governmental structure was so dysfunctional. Yeah, I agree with we, that. We couldn't get out of our own way. I agree to, with that. Uh, we've got to get out of our way for one more commercial <laughs> and then one final segment. Uh, and that's all about looking forward. So stay with us as we discuss the future of consolidation on This Week in Jacksonville. You know, Your summer moment awaits you now that the Summer of Audi sales event is here. Get exceptional offers now during the Summer of Audi sales event. It's the flooring sale you've been waiting for. Empire Today's Half Price Sale. Get $2,400 of flooring for $1,200, $5,200 for an amazing $2,600. That's half the price of your entire purchase. Shop for carpet, hardwood, tile, vinyl, and laminate right from home and have it professionally installed. Don't miss Empire's half-price sale. Schedule now. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE Today. You each drive a Ford pickup, right? Yes, yes sir. I'm going to show you a next-generation pickup. Awesome. Let's do this. The bed is made of high-strength steel, which is less susceptible to punctures than aluminum. The stronger, the better. And best of all, this new truck is actually... <laughs> oh, 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 the current Chevy Silverado. It's the Chevy Summer Drive. Current Chevy owners and lessees get a total value over $11,000 or get 0% financing for 60 months on this Silverado All-Star. See your Southern Chevy dealers. Act now. Get Xfinity Internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Experience speed at a great low price. All for $19.99 a month. Call 1-800-XFINITY and ask how you can get even more speed. Get more than two times the speed for just $10 more a month for 12 months. Or seven times the speed for $20 more a month for 12 months. Compare that to AT&T, and you'll see why Xfinity delivers faster, more reliable Internet. Call 1-800-XFINITY or go to Xfinity.com today. When you show up to work, your employer expects you to do your job. But if you're injured because of your job, you should expect that your employer will take care of you. The problem is that many times, employers unlawfully refuse to pay their employees when they're hurt on the job. Our job is to make sure that your medical bills, loss of income, and the benefits available to you are paid immediately so that you and your family are taken care of. For more information, call Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com. One moment can change a life. Intelligent technology can help protect it. The all-new Audi Q5 is here. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we wrap up our conversation, a short segment here. Tom, if you would start us off, what's the future look like for Jacksonville because of consolidated government? Well, in the almost 43 years that I've been here, Jacksonville has become a better place to live year after year after year, and I believe that trend will continue. We are on our way to becoming an even greater city than we are now. Uh, Mayor Godbold talked about his friend uh, Mayor Schaefer up there in Baltimore. That's a city that's in a lot of trouble that we're not in. That's good news. Chris, if you would. I think I'm going to put on my effective citizenship hat for a second and say I think one of the many great qualities of consolidation is the absolute clarity with, with who in government is responsible for solving problems. Uh, we have that clarity about where citizens can access government, uh, where they can have problems solved, how they can make government respond. One of the things I hope for the future of consolidation, in addition to making it available to all, is that we can continue the trend toward having that, uh, that transparency and accountability about who in government can solve problems and where citizens can take their grievances to make government respond. Yeah. 
Harry, what would you say in the future? I think consolidation is not perfect. Uh, we ought to be open-minded about proposed changes, but it's pretty darn good. And uh, we need to be careful about uh, doing something that's going to uh, screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor Godbold, briefly. It's kind of like the Constitution. It may not be perfect, but it's the best in the world. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we got here. But you got to be careful about the people you put in there to run it. And you got to have people in there. When consolidation started off, it was all about getting some businessmen and women uh, who would volunteer to go up there and serve a certain time and move, go back to their businesses, not to be up there making careers to see where they were going to go next and where they were going to go next. When that mayor gets there, he, he and that council has to do what's best for the, features, uh, the future of the city and not what's best for their political future. Well, that's true. Thank you, Mayor. Rick Mulaney, last word on this. The future in Jacksonville because of consolidation. Uh, on a positive note, if you look backwards over the last 50 years, the transformation of Jacksonville, and I agree with Tom, it's been better over the last 50 years in remarkable ways. In large part was due to the change in 1968 to this form of government with dramatic leadership. The great news for the future is that in Jacksonville, Florida, more so than I think anywhere in the state, maybe even the country, because of this form of government and because of this community, anything is possible in Jacksonville, Florida, because we can pursue huge policy objectives to transform this city and develop a consensus to pursue it. Jacksonville, a consolidated government gives us that opportunity. It doesn't guarantee it, but it gives us that opportunity with the right leadership and vision. Yeah leadership, vision. There was some passion here this morning as we talked about this. I appreciate it. I appreciate your insights uh, and really your expertise on uh, what has been this adventure for 50 years here. Thanks this morning very much. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time, and we're working to arrange a visit with Congressman Al Lawson next week. Some other things on the agenda as well, so make your plans to join us next Sunday, too. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and online at newsforjax.com. Ever before, more people get their news from News 4 Jax, Jacksonville's number one source for local news.